K-pop. If you're like me, it's one of those things you know exists that you don't know very much about. Most of our knowledge resides somewhere in the realm of Psy's Gangnam Style, or maybe even a BTS track. I've personally never really taken the time to explore the genre, but the industry itself and understanding its influence over the individual citizens, however, I can't find myself getting enough of. Most K-pop revolves around idols, which are basically musical celebrities. They can be both boys or girls, but I think I'll be focusing mostly on the girls, as a specific aspect of their influence pertains more to the subject at hand. I'd like to argue that the current representation of idols in Korea is having a direct and harmful impact on the rates of depression in Eastern Asia, regardless of how innocent the situation may seem. Many K-pop idols begin their journey in a recruitment process. Idols are recruited from all over Asia and even from the United States, like Tiffany and Jessica from the group Girls' Generation, who were born and raised in California. There are many details that go into the recruitment process. Things like age, physique, musical talent, and education are just a few factors considered when deciding if a young boy or girl will be accepted. Good looks tend to be the most sought after as that tends to be the industry's stock and trade. They then go through a rigorous training program, which typically goes along with the extremely competitive Korean school system. These training programs cover things like vocal skills, instrumentation, dieting, dancing, and foreign language in order to communicate with fans. In fact, most K-pop stars can speak Korean, English, Chinese, and Japanese, at least to some degree. But what makes K-pop so effective? How has it managed to become this insanely strong piece of cultural technology? Well, in the article Quantitative Analysis of a Half Century of K-Pop Songs, written by Pohang University of Science and Technology, as well as Yonsei University, it is stated that over the past five decades, the top lyrics written in K-Pop music are love and heart. Songs that use this language are not written to a specific person, however. They're written towards the individual listener. Targeting you, the listener, is something the K-pop industry has mastered. John Seabrook, author of Factory Girls, discovered a blog post written as, You think you love them, but then you see Tiffany point directly at you and wink, and everything else that exists in the world just disappears. You think you love them, but then you see Soo Young look at you dead in the eye and say in English, Thank you for coming. I might not know how much I love these girls. Tiffany and Soo Young refer to two of the members of one of the all-time most popular K-pop groups, Girls' Generation. This post was written by John Toth, who Seabrook described as a 29-year-old white guy, a computer scientist from New Mexico. This just goes to show the appeal that K-pop has towards men, even if they're in separate countries. With women, however, the influence is a bit different regarding female K-pop stars. Like I've said, Korea's citizens look up to K-pop stars to find influence. They want to be told what to wear and what to look like, similar to how we look up to our favorite celebrities. It's different in Korea, however, as almost the entire country is absolutely obsessed with idols. Music takes the back seat, while idols as people are represented as the most important aspect of the culture. The spotlight is not on their talented vocal or instrumental skills, but rather their fashion sense and great looks. And what about depression? Where does that come in? Well, Korea set itself up to exist in a paradox. In order to become what Korea deems to be desirable, you must go through the rigorous idol training program. For that, you must be specially selected by a small group of people who only pick the best of the best, and by that I mean the best looking. This results in people who are just stuck feeling as if they're not good enough and can never achieve greatness. It leads to sadness and a sense of failure despite each person being perfectly fine with who they are. I have a lot of respect for Korean musicians who have managed to make it on their own. They really have to break past that barrier feeling like the only way to become desirable is through K-pop training programs. Both of the songs I used for this video are recorded by a Korean jazz group called Blue Bug with two G's. Although it's not necessarily K-pop, I still feel like the support of foreign independent artists is something we take for granted. There's actually a lot of great K-pop out there, as I've found during the making of this video. The popular video game League of Legends, which is extremely popular in Korea, just released a K-pop music video advert for the game that went viral seemingly overnight. It definitely slaps. There's also artists like Harisu, an openly transgender K-pop star and actress who was the second Korean citizen to legally change their gender back in 2002. There are many reasons to support K-pop as its influence slowly makes its way over to North America. 
Just be aware of your personal representation of your favorite idols. Don't forget that you're perfect just the way you are.